So today, uh, today we have the last lecture of Sergei's lecture series, uh, Quantum Topology Generic Q. Sergey, please. Yes, thank you very much again. <clears throat> so um, today uh, we have to, I mean, the most probably main and most important uh, order of business is to talk about um, quantum groups. So they're already lurking <clears throat> on the background several times. Uh, and now we'll have a little bit more systematic discussion. Also, I apologize, my voice is a little low because of the seasonal allergies and uh, I, it may get uh, even lower throughout the lecture. We'll see how things go. So, um, right. Um, We'll start with uh, UQ of SL2. So, um, this is a basic example. Oops. Now it says my connection is lost. Uh, but UQ of SL2 did appear. I see it on the other screen. Oh, here we go. Um, right. And we'll work at uh, generic Q. So that's the main point, uh, meaning that uh, Q will be a complex number um, inside uh, the unit disk. So we already saw several reasons for this uh, earlier. And again, we'll come back to it again in various forms now. Um, so uh, for, uh, like I said before, everything I'll do is for root system uh, A1, generalization to other Cartan types and high rank are possible and have been discussed in the literature, but um, I leave it um, outside of today's lecture. So um, this is uh, associative algebra over, oops, over K, which is uh, C adjoint Q. So in particular in my norm, so the, the reason I say this is because there are different normalizations in the literature. And uh, one typical way to sort it out is by saying whether we use uh, score roots of Q. So this uh, implies that uh, we don't in this normalization and uh, standard generators. Uh, Sergey, yeah. it's a little bit mm, mm, kind of not very nice because your Q is a fixed complex number, uh, absolute value smaller than one. And the next line you say is that it's an algebra of rational functions for where Q can be any, so it's kind of not good. Either you should make a choice, either you consider the algebra over C of Q or you fix Q inside of the unit disk. Um, you cannot that's a, do both. Um, that's, that's a good question. So in fact, um, it's uh, it goes quite deep uh, to, to the extent that uh, I can give a quick uh, answer and make an easy fix, but um, I don't think I can give, um, um, I mean, you'll, you'll see what's going to happen. So we'll start here with um, K um, being the rational functions, and uh, then we'll move eventually here. Uh, so end mm. up. Okay, all right. Here. So therefore, what's going to be needed is, um, um, yeah, so again, I'll, I'll be able to make some comments on this process, but I think there is a lot more that also is, is uh, something more interesting and deeper going on. So, but that's, uh, it's good you notice this, absolutely. Yeah. So I'll, I'll start uh, with uh, C of Q, their um, uh, fractions. So uh, generators are uh, usual Chevalier generators, E, F, and K. And uh, for completeness, I'll write uh, the relations. In fact, I'm going to use this later. Um, 
when I'll try to relate uh, quantum group at generic Q to, to roots of unity. So uh, this will be the right time to discuss various specializations that uh, also appeared before. So uh, yeah, again, it's for graduate students, Q is, K is assumed to be inversible. Yes, that's that's right. So actually, in, in fact, uh, thank you. I in my notes I have also K inverse here. Thank you so much. That's also true. And um, uh, right. So conjugating E gives you Q square E. Conjugating uh, by K F gives you Q minus two F and uh, commutator of E and F. Uh, oh, just a second, my connection again was lost. Not sure why it happens. Okay. Yeah, so commutator of E and F is K minus K inverse divided by Q minus Q inverse. Okay, so these are uh, standard relations among these generators. And now um, we can try to construct uh, various representations. So um, first and perhaps um, the simplest um, class of representations are finite dimensional representations. So I'll move to the right uh, on the whiteboard. Suppose we have a representation of dimension N. Then uh, we can decompose it into weight spaces. So um, I'll denote this uh, weight spaces. So it will be sum over J, Vn of J. And uh, in this weight spaces, uh, E and F act as follows. Uh, so we start with uh, Vn one minus and here move up by E. This is the standard diagrammatic uh, way of expressing it all the way up. And then it terminates uh, with the final E action at Vn of n minus one. So n goes back by F. So I'll write uh, explicit action on, um, um, vectors in each white space in a second. One, I'll make uh, a slight uh, generalization. So um, this um, n-dimensional representation is the simplest, and um, also uh, maybe I should say that it has quantum dimension. Sorry, yeah, dimension of v n is uh, what's usually called n. This uh, expression will appear in the second when I'll try to write explicit action on vectors. And uh, it's uh, quantum n q to the n minus q to the minus n divided by q minus q inverse, okay? Now, what we will need uh, is a representation uh, which is infinite dimensional. So either highest uh, representation, which has either highest weight or lowest weight. Um, and these are called Verma modules. <clears throat> so we can denote them um, by um, uh, V either H 
or L if it's highest or lowest weight. Uh, dimension is infinite, so I'm not sure if I should write this infinity, but important thing, this uh, highest weight, which uh, was integer for a finite dimensional representation here, it can be anything. So uh, lambda is, is any number. And um, in particular, uh, I will also introduce a variable x. So related to that, uh, we'll define x to be uh, q to the lambda. So one can work with either uh, lambda or x. And um, the notation X is the same as appeared at some of the previous lectures. So it's uh, eventually I'll connect it to, to that X. For instance, when we're doing integrals, we're integrating over some variables XI, these are exactly this axis. But uh, my job is to explain through this lecture uh, how it connects to, to that story. So anyway, coming back to, to this uh, Verma module, so, so what are they? Um, they um, uh, right, so so they um, have the following uh, structure. So since they're highest weight, so let me focus on on highest weight for concreteness. So we start with some um, weight space V of lambda. So that's uh, what we get by action of E from um, weight space V of lambda minus two, and we can get back there by, by acting with F and so on and so forth. So the diagram looks similar, except that now there is no uh, stopping point. So it goes indefinitely to, to the left. So in other words, um, we have, um, we can introduce uh, basis well, vectors. Basis yes. For the highest, if uh, will you use H and L uh, in what will follow for? Uh... Um, Probably not. So uh, oh, in principle, it is uh, important, but it's it's it's, a, it's such a small detail that I'll probably try to avoid for today. Especially since you encouraged me to focus on more conceptual things. Yeah, uh, okay. I'll I'll need to worry about some plus minus signs, and uh, the both that the, that will trigger H and L. But um, I'll just let's focus on highest for for some. Yeah, 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 just for the students in mathematics. Mathematical literature, Verma modules are always highest weight, and what's known as lowest weight, it's dual to Verma modules. Yeah, uh, actually, that's uh, indeed a um, good point. Uh, so therefore, let me, in fact, uh, I totally agree with this remark. So let me mention here in quote, in parentheses, dual. Yes, exactly. Um, right, so, uh, as I was saying, we can introduce um, basis vectors for this um, weight spaces. So let me call it V sub N, where N uh, will be bounded in one way, for example, uh, greater or equal than zero. And with this notation, V sub N belongs to uh, V infinity, I'll stop uh, writing highest because that's that's again assumed for, for now. Um, but you saw that the weight is changed by two. So it's gonna be a space uh, of weight lambda minus two n, okay? And uh, in terms of these uh, vectors, uh, the action is very similar to the usual SL2 uh, action. For instance, E acting on Vn produces this quantum n that we saw a moment ago, um, Vn minus one. So F acting on Vn produces uh, lambda minus n Vn plus one. Uh, and K acting on Vn produces uh, basically Q to uh, lambda minus to N times Vn itself. Okay. So now um, associated to, uh, so what, um, 
what we're going to do. I, are there any questions so far uh, on this? Good. So uh, th th this uh, appeared in uh, as a question maybe um, on the second day, I forget. Um, when Jan asked me whether one can introduce um, uh, nodes and links, and I pointed out that there are two kinds. Um, so uh, they correspond exactly to this uh, two families of representations. So what we will need uh, to connect to uh, invariance of three manifolds and surgery formula that um, I mentioned before is uh, this infinite dimensional Verma modules. But in addition to those, one can introduce uh, finite dimensional uh, modules. And in both cases, uh, so what one typically does, uh, one looks at um, various uh, nodes and uh, uh, links and braids uh, colored by, by these representations. So um, what uh, I will need at least for main part of the story without this generalization that includes nodes colored by finite dimensional representations is uh, are the ones colored by, by Verma modules. And um, here um, to each... No. In, in, in this older story, when you have finite dimensional representations, it's important that you have also dual and you can make tensor product. If I remember when you construct, say, topological uh, field theory, this combinatorial way, you need to have a tensor product structure. But in infinite dimensional story, you do not have tensor category structure uh, that's, uh, would both. Exactly. So that's exactly the important delicate point to which I'm planning to come in the very end of this lecture. And mm -hmm. you'll, you'll also see why. So that also touches, remember you asked me, uh, why didn't I start with TQFT? And I had to reply that, and I'll try to explain this today, that uh, this is a very, uh, definitely not TQFT in the sense of a T. And uh, that, that's, uh, there are many reasons for this. And um, it is a TQFT, but in a much more um, kind of delicate and refined sense. So I'll try to explain that. And in particular, you're absolutely right that um, if I want to have uh, duels, so that's precisely the question where I would have to worry about signs and also introduce highest and lowest weight and deal with that extremely carefully. So, um, if you allow me in the first approximation, I'll uh, I'll just omit that. And again, yeah, I'll yeah, comment on this in the very end. Yeah, don't forget. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, uh, it is not that I, I want to emphasize. And again, I'll try to make it precise with five bullet points why it's not uh, the same as the old story at Roots of Unity. That's precisely the reason why I didn't start with that in the first place. So, uh, but some of that, uh, some of that whole story actually works. And um, one thing that works is, uh, for instance, you can associate even to this uh, infinite dimensional Verma module, a universal R matrix. So that uh, is uh, basically the same um, as is on old days. Uh, question is what we're gonna do with that. And now if we work with Verma modules, this R matrix, uh, well, uh, what is it? It's, um, it depends on Q, so that's uh, clear. It also depends on all these labels that I call N uh, associated with weight spaces. So it takes as an input, for example, I and J um, uh, states, uh, you could say, or vectors in a uh, given Verma module and um, produces, say, K and L as an output. <clears throat> but it's also labeled. Um, and I should probably write it in different color by the corresponding X and Y. So these are uh, these complex variables which uh, tell us which particular uh, weight, highest weight of the Verma module we use. And it's important that now this X and Y are continuous parameters as opposed to discrete data in finite dimensional modules, okay? So therefore our matrix is labeled by, I mean, it's, uh, indexed by a bunch of things. Q, X, Y, all of these are continuous complex parameters. And I, J, and K, these are uh, integer, I, J, K, L, these are uh, integers uh, labeling vectors inside the Verma module. 
So here, uh, maybe I'll uh, write it that uh, I, J, K, L are all assumed to be say non-negative integers. So likewise, there is uh, inverse R matrix. So R inverse, which is uh, associated to a different uh, type of crossing. So here I had over crossing, this will be the under crossing. So same type of decorations. So they will be I, J, K, L. And uh, again, importantly, everything is also, I mean, the strands, they, they're roughly speaking colored by, by X and Y. So now um, comes important point, and, and this is uh, due to uh, my uh, student, Sangyuk Park. So since Park is very popular uh, last name uh, in Korea, I'll write the name uh, explicitly. And there are two relevant papers on this, uh, one from um, 2020 and the other is uh, from last year, 2021, uh, which says that given this, um, uh, once you project um, a knot on a plane, you can do the following. You can uh, basically given, so, uh, for K, which is either a knot or link. Uh, and not in generator of EQSL2. <laughs> oh, yes, uh, that, right. So uh, apologies, yes, uh, capital K, hopefully uh, from context, uh, yes. Jan is pointing out to have a clash of notations that Ks generate both as standards, unfortunately. Um, um, Right, so what you do is uh, you project it to a plane, uh, you associate to every crossing. Uh, so for example, suppose we have a knot, which is the only one, oops, I was going to say I can draw, but uh, not so well. So in this case, uh, for example, for trefoil knot, there are three crossings. Um, you put orientation and you associate our matrix to each type of crossing. And then you can construct um, this uh, invariant that we discussed before. Um, so Fk of X and Q will be basically, that's the same thing as what we call Z hat of an odd complement. Important thing, it depends on this, uh, on, on Q and also on continuous variable X. So uh, this will be defined as some over all these IJKs uh, of corresponding R matrices, okay? So these are gonna be now infinite sums because uh, IJKL, the corresponding states run over infinite set. I do not understand uh, the statement. So your, your RIJK, uh, so first of all, if representations, uh, 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 fixed R I J K L. It's a number. Now you want to consider it as a function of what variables of uh, highest weights. Yeah, of, exactly. So eventually, so because will be a function of two variables x, x and y, not just x. So what is F K? Oh, uh, okay. So previous uh, picture with X and Y was for um, two pieces of the strand crossing each other. So a priori, they can carry indeed completely different highest weight representations. Yeah. But because uh, for example, a picture of a knot consists of a single strand. So it's a uh, strand carries ah, its label X. X. Well, why you just- Exactly, remember. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But what's going to happen maybe to illustrate it um, exactly what you pointed out is suppose we had uh, a link with two components. So something like a hop link. 
right? So then there would be still two crossings. I would have the same R matrix business, but now uh, I have two components and in principle, one could be X, the other would be Y. And in my previous uh, notations, uh, they would be X1 and X2. Because remember in the beginning, we had as many variables X of which we did integration in the surgery formula um, that, that uh, as, as link components. So these are exactly now should be understood as labels of this uh, highest weights for variable modules. So doesn't make sense. So that's that's the way in which uh, this connects to uh, the previous discussion. So it, in this way, you can produce this FK for many nodes, links, and if you plug it into the surgery formula that we already discussed, you, you get invariant of a closed three manifold. So, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's interesting, yeah. So it's, it's not it, because it, it, to be invariant in the end, you should have uh, this compatibility with Kirby relations and normally our matrix is just young Baxter. So which means that you cannot see it before you plug it in as a, as, as a, a weight and integrate with other stuff, including theta functions. So it's very interesting. Yeah. Exactly. So, right. So that's, uh, that's where things get obviously more technical and, um, again, I encourage you to take a look at uh, two of his papers and there is a lot going on and particularly at some point when the lowest weights are needed to overcome some of these difficulties, but um, I won't go there. So instead, uh, I want to connect this. Now, yeah. And I try to understand that uh, when you have in the strands here in, in terms of the representation, Verma module, so the X corresponded to a Verma module for each of a certain highest weight X and the Y will be corresponding to another Verma module. Mm -hmm. And the R is just the, you do this, um, the tensor products, it's a home yeah. Mm -hmm. You just change the order. Okay, thank you. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that's exactly correct, yeah. Right, so, um, in, right. So I want to use remaining time to uh, comment on, um, elucidate why, you already see why it's delicate. So in particular, one obvious point is that this uh, TQFT is, uh, has infinite sums. So in other words, uh, we should immediately expect that spaces of states on any uh, surface, if we try to follow IT's kind of construction, will be infinite dimensional. So that's already outside of the traditional mathematical definition. And therefore to me as a mathematician, this would not be normal at type TQFT. Again, I'll come back to it later. But I also want to make a relation to a more traditional or somewhat more familiar invariants of knots and three manifolds by forcing this construction to go to a root of unity. So suppose, um, and now in this uh, picture of the Q plane that, that we had before. Uh, Sorry uh, to interrupt you. Yeah. Uh, so still, I try to understand this formula FK equals the summation, you take the R and the R. Mm -hmm. And Rs are the linear transformations, so the, the roughly the bracket RR that should be given some kind of a function or you, you integrate. Uh, well, the you summation is yeah, summation is over a bunch of uh, labels, the uh, I1, I2, or what I called IJK, uh, exactly for the crossings, yeah. Okay. So for instance, for this uh, picture of the trefoil knot, which appears next to it, uh, mm -hmm. there are three crossings. So there will be three R matrices and uh, we can label the corresponding strands. So for example, this will be I, this will be J, uh, this comes back as a J. Um, K, K, things like that, uh, L here, L here, uh, I, uh, and I have to give another name, uh, maybe M. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fine. M. And the, 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 the summons, RR, so what mm -hmm. is, 
What, what are the summons? So this is a question. So uh, product of matrix elements uh, or corresponding R matrix elements. So for example, um, mm -hmm. uh, literally here, uh, we would, uh, to this piece, we do associate what R, um, let me introduce orientation. So it would be um, going this way. So I won't care about R versus R inverse, but I want to know who is incoming and who is outgoing. So incoming is, um, oh, I also didn't label this thing. So let me call it N. So it will be NL incoming, I am outgoing, and it depends on uh, X. Uh, y is the same as X, so it would be X, X, and Q, right? And then there will be product of three of these things for, for the trefoil, for instance. So th these are the coefficients under the basis you mentioned for each of the Verma module. Yes, exactly. And... exactly. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Right, so... Um... Very good. Coming back to uh, this um, um, question, let, let me ask to, uh, right, so what happens under uh, operation of taking Q to a root of unity? So uh, let's, let's recall um, this uh, relations. <clears throat> so for instance, um, um, and uh, in, in my notations, I'll assume that uh, Q, uh, is going to be even root of unity. So it's going to be uh, e to the uh, pi i over, um, over some k. Um, oops. Sorry, I lost my connection iPad. I'm trying to uh, restart it. Here we go. Uh, okay, so Q is going to be um, e to the uh, pi, uh, two pi i over something even. So let me call this even number um, K or, or another standard notation as P actually. So um, um, we go back to our commutation relations in UQ of SL2. For example, we can look at um, conjugation of E by, by K. And that had the form uh, Q square times E. And what we see is that if we now repeat um, this um, um, P times, on the right-hand side, we'll have Q to the power two P. And because we are working with, um, um, with um, two P root of unity, so uh, at two pth root of unity, we see that uh, k to the two p becomes central. In fact, even k to the p is central and uh, acts uh, by plus minus signs, but k to the two p uh, can be set to one consistently. And likewise, uh, you can see that you can also set e to the p to zero and uh, f to the p to zero. This is part of the fairly standard uh, fact about quantum groups, which is extremely rich and interesting that at roots of unity, <coughs> uh, quantum groups uh, become super interesting. They acquire a very large center and this is basically what we're seeing. And what I'm describing here is a version of quantum group that uh, usually goes by the name of restricted quantum group. It's the same thing as a small or one of the versions of small quantum group and produced by Lustig. So he introduced a couple of versions and what I'm describing is one of them. Yeah, you should somehow be careful because the quantum groups, it's not a problem, but our matrix is. Yes, yes, I'll come to this in a second. It's, yeah, it's exactly, uh, yeah. So it's a very interesting story. So um, 
there are many versions of quantum groups at roots of unity. So since my time is short, I'll probably be able to tell you about maybe one or two. So they go by different names. For example, <clears throat> Dikancini Katz version is where you just take the limit and don't do anything. There is a Lustig version where you um, introduce divided powers that actually won't be relevant to us. And uh, what I described here is again, goes by a different name. It's called again, this restricted quantum group. Uh, and denoted with a bar. And even this one has several versions too. So I'll, I'll comment on this precisely uh, due to this uh, question, whether they admit our matrix or not, or in other words, whether they uh, correspond to um, quasi-triangular or non-quasi-triangular categories. So uh, at this point, I just want to, again, keep it fairly elementary and uh, at the level of uh, defining relations on the Chevalet generators, point out that, uh, look, we actually have, when Q is a root of unity, uh, we have this consistent equations which allow us to make EMF nilpotent and uh, K uh, unipotent of order uh, 2P. So if we do this, something interesting happens. So first of all, um, this uh, entire uh, concoction, uh, becomes finite dimensional. So the, the restricted quantum group itself, uh, this UQ bar, of, uh, we're discussing just of SL2, uh, will have size two times P cubed. And the same, of course, is going to be true for higher rank, except that it will be higher degree polynomial in P. So that's um, one thing. <clears throat> and um, another point that's, uh, or interesting thing that's happening is that, um, well, I said that uh, even the original quantum group has huge center at uh, roots of unity and we're actually utilizing this fact uh, without um, properly saying it, but uh, you can also ask what about the center of this uh, restricted quantum group UQ bar? So that of course is also finite dimensional and dimension of that is uh, 3P minus one. Okay. So this is uh, something that uh, has been studied uh, in connection with the geometric representation theory and many other exciting questions. And uh, there are uh, different ways uh, you can try to look at this center. So uh, one is where you decompose into uh, so-called blocks so there is a so-called block decomposition. I won't really need it, so, uh, but I just want to mention that it exists. So um, in this way, you write uh, center as collection of a bunch of um, three-dimensional blocks and two special blocks of size one. So one of which is Steinberg. And a uh, number of threes that should appear uh, is um, um, P minus one. So that we already see from the total dimension. So three stands for three dimensional block and so on. But another uh, decomposition, so that's not gonna be needed to me, but um, maybe I'll mention something related to blocks later. But another decomposition that uh, will be more important is uh, due to the fact that the center enjoys action of SL2Z, the modular group. And this is actually pretty cool and quite important. And um, therefore we can also ask how does it decompose into SL2Z representations? Uh, of course, they're well, going to be finite well, dimensional. What, what is the action? Yeah, so I'm going to, to say, I mean, it's non-trivial. So, and it's precisely the question, what's the action? I don't actually, uh, if you ask this question for general Cartan type or even for higher rank, I don't think it's known because even dimension of the center of this restricted quantum group has been computed only recently uh, and only for Cartan type A as far as I know. But the action of SL2Z, what I'm gonna tell you in the, in the next line is not known in high rank. Uh, so we're currently working with Borea and uh, Fagin and Kolero Shetichen and have a, a candidate for what it should be, but uh, it's, it's not in the literature. But in, for, for rank one, it is in the literature. 
So for SL2, it is an uh, analogous decomposition into SL2 ZREPs has the following structure. So first of all, you have some representation. Um, let me call it, um, I don't know, V or maybe W to avoid clashes or with previous notations. So something of size P plus one. So it's a P plus one dimensional representation of uh, SL2Z. Then you have two dimensional representation. I'll just write C2 tensored with a uh, representation of dimension P minus one. So you can see dimension works out. And uh, this dimension P minus one representation is something well known. Uh, this is uh, so-called Verlinde representation. So uh, the corresponding, so it's a representation of size P minus one, and I'll give it a name. I'll call it Verlinde P minus one. So it has uh, usual S and T matrices that uh, appear in Verlinde modular tensor category. So this is normal modular tensor category. Um, in particular, S matrix is proportional to sine and so on and so forth. Okay, but uh, this uh, WP plus one is has a very strange S matrix. It's proportional to cosine, and um, this entire package actually has is is not um, something that you would find in modular tensor categories uh, or in any textbook on modular tensor categories. Why? Because uh, this <coughs> um, action. Uh, does appear as, or this space that I just described of size uh, 3p minus one does appear as a graph and group of some category, but it's uh, non semisimple. So it's non semisimple or uh, also sometimes called logarithmic. And this showed up in our discussion yesterday in a, a very different um, kind of incarnation. So right. what is logarithmic and what is non semisimple I do not understand something. Well, the, the, this, uh, let me say, this is the representation category of uh, logarithmic representation category of actual vertex algebra called a triplet. Uh, exactly, vertex that's vertex. what I was about to say. No, 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 no. I, I can guess. Uh, but the vertex the... algebra is a vertex uh, orbit algebra, not a, not quite. I do not see any vertex algebra here. Yeah, not I more... didn't get uh, you guys jumping ahead. <laughs> so let, yeah. let, let, let me fi finish <laughs> sentence or paragraph. Yes, that's what I was going to say. That's uh, absolutely true, but I didn't get there yet. So what I want to point out is, uh, or kind of explain, so we start with a generic Q, right? So that was our starting point. So let me try to write a diagram. So there was generic Q uh, somewhere inside the unit disk, right? Uh, or at least that's that's how I want to view the previous construction now based on this work of Park and uh, so on. So then uh, what we did, we set uh, Q to uh, root of unity, root of one, and um, so for example, if it's c to the pi i over p, and um, we obtained uh, some uh, three p minus one dimensional wrap of SL two z. Okay, so then I want to uh, point out that uh, to get to something familiar such as um, uh, this Verlinde representation, namely uh, Verlinde of size p minus one, uh, which is related in turn to uh, things like um, WRT invariants, um, I don't know, in physics world churn Simons theory, but um, I'm not using physics words here. Um, uh, rational VOA such as uh, WZW, uh, rational vertex algebras. So we need to do, and many other things, we need to do semi-simplification. So this is uh, something that, again, I want to mention toward the end, but 
uh, obviously I won't be able to explain or give full introduction into this topic. I'll, I'll mention lots of words, but um, I'm heading to, to very specific thing. Um, but at the previous step, which was more natural, uh, if we just said Q to root of unity without doing anything, what we actually get is uh, also some structure, which is maybe you could say somewhat similar to um, the, this uh, category of representations of some vertex operator algebra. However, this vertex algebra is going to be logarithmic. So it is, uh, it does relate to logarithmic view A. And again, that, this blue arrow, this relation is um, subject of whole different talk. And um, it's called one comma P triplet algebra, triplet VOA. And um, the corresponding uh, invariants, if you try to construct them, um, so, so first of all, the, this uh, vertex algebra has non-semi-simple uh, tensor category. So there is non-semi-simple, semi-simple, uh, MTC. This is uh, so you, you see you're explaining some things which kind of people may know, but you do not explain more important. What do you mean non-semi-simple MTC? How should we know that VOA gives rise to, uh, to, to a tensor category? Uh, is it a general statement or it's a statement about? No, no, that, that's that's Kajdan Lustig correspondence. That, that's right. Kajdan Lustig so correspondence is just correspondence between uh, representations of affine Lie algebras and quantum groups. Yes, so exactly. Is, so that's, yeah, that, that's this generalization of Kajdan Lustig correspondence. That's. Uh, but this slight word generalization, uh, <laughs> it's not by Kajdan and Lustig. It's by no, not at all. Not, not at all. In fact, it's uh, in some sense, it's a moving target because it's a developing field. So uh, this Kajdan Lustig correspondence, for instance, is not established again in most general rank and uh, there are many, many details here that uh, is basically cutting edge of that of that subject. But um, again, I only have maybe what 10 minutes left. So well, you have more, maybe more than 10 minutes, but why you spend them just explaining some old stuff without explaining the new one? I mean, like uh, quantum groups, it's a nice topic. I mean, sort of well established, but its relations to VOA is not well established. So. I, I, yeah, I, I agree. So, um, but uh, anyway, so in at least here, um, I do want to emphasize um, a lot of things that are not uh, clear or obvious. And um, um, so, um, that, that's that's why um, I'm trying to paint, for example, the, this diagram with, um, which also should make a. I want in, I want to spend this remaining ten minutes to to explain uh, why, for instance, uh, I couldn't start in the beginning. At some point, you made a suggestion. Why why don't you start with uh, something um, TQFT structure? So I want to explain now that th this is very different structure. So I want to uh, give this word some content. So yeah, but you see, uh, certain, I'm not religious about two KFT because, as you know, IT I just uh, wrote some axioms for something which people knew before him. It's not a, kind of it's a good axiomatic um, stand, but uh, before him there was system of axioms for conformal field theory by Seagull and Seagull look for this gluing properties of amplitudes. So, so if you say that it's not TQFT in sense of some books, that's nice. But what, what are the structures? We yeah, that's, that's, that's what, yeah. So it's, it's uh, not, not just failing TQFT axioms because say we have infinite sums rather than finite sums, although that's already significant. But there is a, indeed a whole new structure that, 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 that's lurking here. So even though, again, I won't have time to fully explain this logarithmic things, I'm glad we at least were able to mention, I want to point out some of the important points. So in the world of WRT invariants or WZW, uh, there is no automorphism. 
that's acting, for example, on, on vertex algebra. There are no interesting automorphisms. But important point of this uh, story here, so that's one of the points, I'll, I'll make several of them, is that we actually do have non-trivial automorphism acting, okay? So conceptually, this is uh, one of the reasons why um, something that will be associated, okay, I'll, I'll come back to this uh, later. So maybe let me make a step back and uh, again, to finish in the 10, 10 minutes, I want to do the following. I want to say that suppose you have, uh, so well-known theorem is that suppose you have a Frobenius algebra, then you associate, you can associate it to dimensional TQFT. And that will be indeed, um, if Frobenius algebra is semi-simple, that will be perfectly in the sense of a T, everything is fine. Analogous theorem in three dimensions, which is usually known as to rive theorem, is that if you take a modular tensor category, also some algebraic structure um, in a well-defined mathematical sense, uh, you can associate a three-dimensional TQFT. And in this three-dimensional TQFT, what you do, you do cutting and gluing and introduce various uh, knots and links such that they're colored by uh, objects in this category. So you decorate it with various lambdas, uh, which are objects in your category, okay? So we already um, uh, see that um, um, <clears throat> right. So so what's uh, happening here? So uh, before you did simply semi simplification and take uh, uh, so so from um, restricted quantum group this guy that we get here and its variance. you can produce a structure which is um, going to give you invariance of three manifolds and uh, various nodes. So this is known under the name of Akutsu Diguchi Otsuki or CGP for Constantino Gear, Petura Mirand and various other invariants. So they're associated to roots of unity, but um, they don't play by the rules of TQFT. So this is uh, not a traditional TQFT. And how to formulate it, uh, people, I mean, this is another cutting edge of the subject, which has been developed by uh, Torayev himself. In fact, in, in 90s and late 90s, he started looking at this non-semi-simple versions of modular tensor categories and asking basically, can uh, I improve this previous theorem, which now carries his name. Uh, by people like uh, Nathan Gear and others. But uh, the point is that here in the story, for example, um, there is currently no uh, Hilbert space that you can associate to a two-dimensional sphere. So not only it's failing to QFT axioms of a T for some um, technical pedantic reasons, but there are just no building blocks some, sometimes like uh, you, I mean, currently in, in this big literature, there is no uh, Hilbert space for two dimensional sphere. That's it. That's that's pretty bad. It, it should be, for instance, in this current work with Fagan and um, Kola Rishitichian, we uh, have a proposal for, for it, but again, it's a moving target. So it's, it's a cutting edge of, of the subject. Another thing that's important, even though it's not a TQFT, uh, it's also, um, even if it can be a TQFT one day, it should be decorated. So it should be, I'll put TQFT in quotes uh, where some extension is definitely needed and this is what people are working on. But in, another thing is that it's decorated by uh, elements of H upper one of whatever you're studying, um, oops. Uh, I ran out of space, so I'll write it here. H upper one of something with C star coefficients or U1 coefficients. And this point here um, 
has to do with the fact that um, we have this automorphism group. So remember, I mentioned I'm, I mentioned earlier that this corresponding VOA uh, and that this newer version of kajdan lustig correspondence or corresponding quantum group and before simplification has automorphisms. And that's actually what gives rise in this, if you try to extend to rise construction, it gives rise to completely new structure. And again, I want to stress that it's not just pedantic thing or little thing. It's, it's a completely new beast, which has not been really developed until recently. Okay, and, it's not kind of in mathematics, there is non-abelian cohomology and certainly if object has automorphisms, so then you kind of, if I would say, moduli space is classified by H2, but H1 is also, also appears. For example, you do not, probably you have something like a gerb of, of TQFTs or something like that. It's not kind of, uh, it, it's not, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's not derived category. It's something for which mathematics, I believe, Kind of doesn't didn't mean. exist until re recently, so that's where no, I wanted to. Mobilian cohomology, it's general stuff. If you have stacks, and to, now probably you have two stacks because your uh, categories have auto automorphisms, so then probably, yeah. No, no, but how, how to extend cutting and gluing, and namely this IT, IT axioms is a rich structure. So there are many axioms and they have to satisfy lots of conditions. I, I agree that stacks of course exist, but uh, how to present a consistent framework um, IT or similar to that, including this cutting and gluing, this has not been done until recently. So in fact, that's, that's where I wanted to advertise uh, recent work that we did with uh, Costantino, um, uh, Francois Costantino. So this is one of the co-creators of this non-simple uh, TQFTs. And Pavel Putrov. And again, the reason I didn't start with this is because it's extremely recent. So this is uh, basically 2021. And even here, there, there are many more things that uh, need to be done. But let me finish with one a question to which I actually don't know the answer. And that's yet another level why I didn't start in this way. It's uh, again, completely new structures, not, not something just minor. You, you really have to work hard for it. So I told you that, um, I told you actually everything I can about this object that had uh, this uh, invariant of quantum groups at generic queue. We also have gluing formulae, which allow you to cut and glue along manifolds with uh, toral boundaries. Um, and from here, you can, previous slides, you can see uh, what the Hilbert space is and so on and so forth. But natural question then you can try to ask, uh, so since we do know what H of T2 is, it's infinite dimensional, of course, and all the surgery formula that we discussed before, I can ask, uh, is it Grothendieck group? Uh, of something, of some category? And if so, what is this category C? So in other words, for generic values of Q, um, what would be analog of Torive's theorem or these generalizations that, that uh, appear in this decorated or non simple story? So I actually don't know the answer to this at all. So this is the category um, that should be associated to a circle if TQFT is extended. And by the way, making this non semi simple and other versions extended is also extremely hard. So, our proof with um, uh, Constantino and Putrov relies on the fact that, I mean, what we prove is that you can actually extend this to, to cobordisms. That's, that's uh, the main non trivial fact, uh, I guess, about this, this additional structure. But uh, at generic values of Q, I have no idea how to do it. And I have no idea what this category should be. Morally, it should be a category of uh, representations of quantum group, which includes all Verma modules, of course, because that's what we used. So this category should be uh, the category of objects by which we can decorate the knots and links and so on. But uh, again, I have no clue what 
is I even don't have a fantasy for, for what analog of derived theorem should be in this context. So that's that's a good place to stop. I present it as a as a completely open question. So you say that um, uh, this category should contain all verma modules, dual verma modules, and maybe more. But again, I have no idea what morphisms are. It should enjoy some kind of SL two Z action, of course. And again, I don't know what that is. So. There is a lot and how to develop into any kind of TQFT structure. I want to point out that it's not just difficult, it's probably hopeless in the near term because you already see that even at roots of unity, when we uh, before we did semi-simplification, story is extremely complicated and again has not been fully developed. So for two sphere, there is no mathematically rigorous construction. And again, to me, being a mathematician, uh, this is a big obstacle. So that's why I could never even start uh, these lectures, for instance, uh, trying to mimic analogous construction. So that's why it starts at top level of three manifolds. We can go only one level down in a sense of a T uh, to co-dimension one surfaces and associate some Hilbert spaces. Uh, for genus one, we know everything about it, but uh, I cannot go further level down to extend the version. Absolutely not. Uh, so you mean? So I, I'm just trying to get it. Uh, so this uh, category C, it should morally correspond to um, to the category of finite dimensional representations of U Q of G in the conventional in the old kind of 90s yeah yeah story yeah. but yeah. Mm. well semi yeah we do, you do root of unity you semi simplify that's gonna be this uh, category is really in the category that's exactly yeah yeah right. but kind of very very uh, roughly yeah uh, but uh, okay but the thing is that again it's modular tensor so for me the indeed there are two important uh, tensor so you should be able to make tensor product so this c uh, i mean uh, uh, where the tensor analog of the tensor structure i don't know i you... have no clue absolutely no clue like i say they, they, this is exactly where uh precisely the reason why on many many grounds uh i don't feel comfortable starting with tqft uh, and then uh, presenting these lectures uh, in, in that form. So for three manifolds, there are invariants. For uh, two manifolds, there are spaces along which we can do cutting and queuing. Uh, and I believe that one day we will have a TQFT. Uh, with some, it's gonna be some clearly decorated version. So as we discussed before, it's gonna be like spin C decorated. So that's already quite interesting, uh, but uh, so, so many questions about this modular structure, tensor products, I don't know. Another thing that, that morally this TQFT should be, I mean, if you want speculations, I can say that what, what we expect is that it's probably roughly something like DB Koch of um, cotangent bundle to Grossmannian, a fine Grossmannian of G, of type G. Why? Um, yeah, that's that's another uh, story, which uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, just very roughly. Uh, why? Um, so there should be an idea because they will understand that you have this disk. You can make it in a formal if you'd like. But I don't know whether it's in the right direction. To think yeah, it, it is in the right direction. Yeah, so this uh, thing is better understood as moduli space of G Higgs bundles yeah. on, on a formal disk on D2. And um, part of the reason is that this whole story comes, so so this uh, that hat comes from uh, S1 cross D2 partition function in some theory. Uh, associated to a three manifold. So if you add a three manifold, that's gonna be six dimensional. So not, not surprisingly, there is some mysterious six dimensional theory that lives on S1 cross D2 cross, cross a disk. 
Uh, and again, there are lots of bells and whistles like important boundary conditions labeled by spin C structures and so on um, that I'm not obviously explaining with spin C uh, boundary conditions. Um, anyway, so that's that's the reason why you might expect this connection to T star of Grassmannian. Actually, much more mathematically um, precise or clearer in motivation might be even coming from uh, geometric Sataki correspondence. Because um, um, if you look at, uh, again, we know what gross and group of this category is, because that's exactly Hilbert space associated to torus, right? And I told you actually cutting and gluing formulae. So at the level of gross and group, you do know what this thing is. And uh, it's, uh, so the space, here, uh, H of T2 is basically roughly um, um, weight lattice of G um, times uh, weight lattice of Langland's dual uh, divided by the while group. Or rather, uh, you could say that uh, C of this. I mean, that's what I mean. It's, it's a huge, it's infinite dimensional space. But if you unwrap this uh, integrals and sums that we were doing in combinatorial presentation, that's going to be the answer. So it, it suggests two things. So first of all, it suggests that the algebra, that algebraic structure that we may be looking for may be like double affine or toroidal because there are two lattices going on. And uh, that's also how you can get to this. Uh... When you say C, you mean what? Algebra, group, group algebra or what? Yeah, yeah. I mean that, that for every element uh, of uh, lambda which lambda check, we have one dimensional space. At least as, 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 a, as a space. Of course, it should come with uh, SL2Z action and other things, and that likely does exist. But again, only at the level of uh, mm -hmm. this Hilbert space of a torus, namely the growth and the group of this um, hypothetical category. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, this hypothetical uh, C, which you wrote by Gibi Koch, Mm, uh, does it contain uh, this Verma module or whatever? Um, that's a good question. Um, I think that's answerable. So, so actually, yeah, they, they, this is a very good question. So precise version for this space uh, uh, here is so-called Ravioli space uh, by um, Braverman, Finkelberg, and Nakajima. Um, and in that context, uh, your question is, is very good because uh, I don't think the answer is known yet, but it's, it's answerable. So it's, it's concrete enough. So yeah, it's, it's, it's extremely good question. By the way, one of this, one another clue why this may be the right kind of direction or candidate for this category is that it clearly enjoys the G action. So remember, I told you that we need automorphisms, and then the, the, this would be um, the G action. Uh, yes, I'm just trying. And the variable Q here corresponds to the loop rotation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this language, yeah, it's kind of more, mm, kind of, it's more adequate because uh, you have Kazdan and Lustig there, and quantum groups appear as, as a byproduct. So you have full geometry. And the fine Grassmannian. Let's see. Uh, mm, and if you take. Uh, it's interesting. If you take periodic cyclic homology of this category, it will be just algebra functions on the colon branch. Mm. It's interesting. Yeah, yes. So, yeah, of course. Okay. It's very interesting, actually. I wish you started <laughs> from, from the end <laughs> and move, move the other way around. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so it's kind of, yeah, it's 
extremely interesting. Well, I prefer to start with something where I can prove theorems, actually. <laughs> and unfortunately, here I can only speculate. <laughs> Uh, so, so you didn't prove anything. Uh, so well, I, no, no, no. There were many theorems, uh, right? Uh, so. You you stated, but you didn't prove. Oh, okay. Yes, at least. No, well, I gave you. Argument. Yeah, yeah, but but it's believable that they, yes, they could yeah. be proved. And this is yeah. Okay, uh, more questions. Uh, so unfortunately, this is the last lecture. Although I wish you. You, you would continue. Well, I'll be glad to discuss uh, yeah. informally yeah. and then hope we will, yes. And yeah. also I want to thank the audience for, for patience and uh, for, for coming. Okay, but okay. so uh, as, as a, a sign of gratitude, the audience can ask a question. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Well, well first, well, thank you for the uh, very uh, stimulating talk. I don't have questions on your joint paper with uh, um, Boris Sagan. Uh, that was the kind of a question at the end of the last talk, you know, from four manifold attaching vertex algebra. Uh, mm -hmm. So I believe it's, uh, it's in the section five. Is, is that uh, you, you told some kind of a VOE value uh, topological field theory from RTS axiom. That's uh, what this entire structure suggests. Uh, uh -huh. But uh, yes, so of course, and as you can see, we're trying to uh, develop it uh, by, by performing some basic cutting and gluing. So for instance, that's where this MTC naturally shows up that we discussed last time. But of course, we are very far from uh, I understand that uh, well, I try to, to get the orientation. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah the general idea is, yeah, correct. Uh -huh. yeah. So, so in this case, that's uh, if you have a four manifold, you have uh, with boundaries, you have M3 plus M3 minus. And uh, so the M3, so the fourth M3 plus corresponding to VOA and also M3 minus also correspond to a VOA. And the morphism, which is a four manifold with the, it's a kind of corporatism. Mm -hmm. So what, how do you, what, 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 um, what were you intending that for the VOA corresponding to the morphism kind of uh, having the boundaries of M3 plus and M3 minus? Um, right, so that's, a, I actually, to be honest, I don't remember by now. Uh, so uh -huh. last time- It's the rough idea of what, uh, uh, here for me, the, the easiest one is the M3 plus corresponding to vector spaces, then the M3, uh, M4 will be corresponding to, to a vector, which actually is the linear transformation or in the dual, in, in, in the tensor products uh, space of the dual of one of them with another one. That's the baby version of the uh, TQFQ, right? Uh, TQFT. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so uh, actually, uh, okay, so what's going on here is, uh, okay, now it comes back slowly. So indeed, um, VOA corresponds to four manifold and MTC corresponds mm -hmm. to uh, boundary. Uh, basically. So mm -hmm. now what, uh, so last time we discussed the case where there are two completely different VOAs which share the same part of their representation category, then we can do conformal extension. So it corresponds to gluing this, right, uh, geometrically. Um, but now you're asking a separate different question. Suppose we have one VOA which has, uh, one four manifold which has two, three manifolds as boundaries. So this actually is is not something, is, is terribly mysterious because uh, basically what it means is that it's a uh, tensor category uh, splits. I mean, it has two pieces which which don't talk to each other, right? Mm -hmm. But they, they should be commuting in a certain sense. E exactly, exactly. Okay. Yeah, so uh, at least that's the basic idea. Okay. Uh, like I said- so I, I, was, I was wondering whether that's some, some sort of a corset construction that, uh, when you do the it's not not quite uh, conformal extension, but uh, 
you, you have two VOAs, you do, do the tensor products. Then they do the, the tensor product of VOA, then go, th go through a conformal extension of the tensor product of VOA. Mm -hmm. that, so whether that's what uh, you, you, you were intending. Because yeah, I, I think- I was, yeah, I was I can... reading, I could not uh, get the <laughs> main idea since you are here, so I can ask you. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's that's fine, and I think it's correct. Yeah, and so you're absolutely okay. right. So we, we gave a couple of examples precisely based on this coset construction because what's happening there is suppose you have one example of such uh, VOA which has two tensor categories which are not talking to each other, so basically coming right. So then you can mm -hmm. compose them because if you start doing this conformal extension, this property will remain, and and I think that was exactly the case in those examples. Mm -hmm. uh, And let me ask uh, one last question. So also in the paper in section six, you mentioned about Arakawa's associate variety for vertex algebras. Um, from, do you have any insights? What, how that's uh, associate variety, which actually is not only a variety, but it's a Poisson variety always. Uh, so how is that going to be used in this uh, TQFT? Or? Not really. Uh, in fact, um, I think that's why it's uh, the last section, which is almost like uh, one page or half a page is extremely short and more of mm -hmm. po posing mm -hmm. the question than answering. I don't remember if you mentioned it in the section, but one thing that always uh, puzzled me or confused me is that sometimes, uh, of course, not every VOA is supposed to have associated variety, right? Well, they so, all do, but some of them become one single point. Exactly. Well, but then any, it's, a, any, it's, rational, it's a, in, any interesting one, rational C2 cofinite always corresponds to one single point. Yes, exactly. So, therefore, we should, uh, if, if there is something at the level of this um, geometry, uh, replacing VOA, namely associated variety, okay. may, maybe something else, it should deal with fat points. So it's, it probably should uh, be formulated in a way that uh, allows uh, completely general schemes. And uh, I, I tried to think a little bit about this, but didn't have really good ideas how to do this scheme value TQFT. So I, I don't know. Yeah, th this is exactly what we have been working on because of the geometrically, that's only one single point, but in, in terms of scheme, which is a fat point. Uh, but if you look at the, it's a local scheme with one single point. If you look at the cotangent direction, which can be quite a large. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the, exactly, this yeah. cotangent direction is exactly what the cohomology. Yeah. Yeah, so I don't want to lose this data. That's why, yeah. I yeah, we, we, are, we will have probably will have the paper um, put on archive in a few days. Well, sounds very exciting. And yes, please well, send me I, a note if you don't mind, so I don't miss it. Oh, yes, but, I, okay. I will definitely send you one. Yeah. So I, I have no clue how the useful this is from the TQFT. Um, I think that's extremely yeah, useful yeah. because uh, VOA is extremely complicated gadget, right? So you want to replace it by something simpler and such a scheme would actually do the job to, to a large extent if we don't lose this information, if we treat it as five points and so on. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it's it's useful because it's a simpler simpler object that will make, uh, I mean, potentially it will, it will be easier to to uh, extend what we did with Fagin to much more general form and fall just at the level of that uh, geometry of such associated varieties, yeah. Okay, well, thank you very much for a very, very interesting and uh, talk and I also appreciate your efforts to try to bring things down to the level of compute. Thank you, thank you so much. Okay, uh, more questions? Uh, well, if not, uh, well, Sergei, thank you very much. It's very interesting lecture course and it's a sort of what's possible to the cutting edge like 2021 oh, sure. just last year paper okay thank thank you and That's so exactly. this is the end of the uh, this uh, week m center lecture series and yeah thank you for having me and again let's continue uh, yeah 
informally in particular, I'm actually quite interested in this question about thermal modules and a fine gross manian. So that's a very yeah, well, well, concrete, well, well, well. concrete question that should be answerable. Okay, well, let's continue. Okay. Mm -hmm.